Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. A few days ago, I did a video demonstrating the new generative fill feature that's found in the current beta version of Photoshop. If you saw that video, you know I wasn't too keen on this uh, new feature. In that video, I used it on a couple different images where it worked okay. Then I used it on some other images where it failed miserably. Well, after that video posted, a few people commented offering me suggestions on how I could get better results. And since then, uh, Adobe released a new build for the beta version of Photoshop. And using those suggestions that those people gave me and the new build of Photoshop beta, I'm getting much better results and I'm a lot more enthusiastic about generative fill. In today's video, I just want to show you some better results using generative fill and talk about what I did wrong in that previous video. Now, this was one of those images that I worked on in that video. And what I did wrong mainly is I wanted to, let's say, remove the woman, the main subject of the image. And I just did a selection of her, a real tight selection. And a few people commented saying that they saw other videos of people demonstrating it. And they basically used the lasso tool and got a real loose selection around whatever it is they wanted to remove. And it did a much better job. So um, almost simultaneously, uh, Adobe released a new build for this beta version of Photoshop. And I tried it with that new build and it actually does work great. So I'm going to do it here. I'm actually going to attempt to remove all the people here, but I think it would work best if I do it in steps. So I don't try to do all the people all at once. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take these two people on the left and the main subject, the lady in the middle, and I'm going to remove them. And I'm going to use the lasso tool for that. And that's where I went wrong before. As I mentioned, I selected the subject before and Really, all you need to do is grab the lasso tool and then do your selection. So I'm going to do a loose selection around these two people over here, and then I'll just jump over here and go around the uh, main subject. And I also caught that person in the back. I don't know if it's going to be taking that person out as well. But so I have my uh, selection. Now we're going to click on Generative Fill. And I'm going to not suggest anything. So when you want to remove things, typically you won't put any suggestions there like you know you know blue car or something like that you don't want it to generate anything you just want it to remove the people that i at least in this case remove the people i selected with the lasso tool and then fill in uh the image with something that makes sense so we're going to just click on generate and you can see then it takes a little while it does send the image up to adobe servers uh, to do this uh, process. So if you have an image you don't want up at Adobe services, then you probably don't want to use generative fill. And also um, the name generative fill sometimes is difficult to say. So if I screw it up, please excuse me. Now this is curious. This happens a few times that I've done it. You might've saw there was a warning up here and it said that something like was against their guidelines so they removed it but you can see it looks fine but what it is typically they give you three variations and see i only have one so whatever it did it gave two other variations and apparently those other two variations um violated some something all right it looks pretty good though uh so let's do the other two people let's see if we can do those uh at the same time so we'll do again a loose lasso so selection around those folks and we'll click on Generative Fill. And again, we're going to leave that blank, blank and click Generate. And, um, you know, before I did the video, I, of course, tested this several times. And you get something different every time. Like these, um, I don't know what these are, like plant holders or something, whatever these things are. See how they're kind of haphazardly placed? I had some um, times when I've done this where I've had these perfectly placed uh, going across like each kind of window or doorway and it looked like real symmetrical. And then now this time they're all kind of haphazardly placed. Now in this case, we did get three examples. Uh, the second example has a person in there and this third example has 
um, something. I don't know what that is. But the first example is the best example. And then now let's say I want to get rid of something in the background here, like this, this stuff back here, maybe just to have trees or something. So what we could do then again is I could do a selection here, another loose lasso selection. And thank you to everyone who offered me suggestions on how I could uh, better use generative fill. I do appreciate your suggestions. We'll click on generative fill again, and again we'll just click on generate and see it get rid of this. And hopefully it doesn't have like that thing come up and saying something was violated, some rule or something. And we actually have three um, choices to choose from uh, when it does this. And it did okay. All right, so there's choice one. There's choice two. There's choice three. Choice three is too busy. Choice, uh, that one just doesn't look right. And this one, I mean, okay, everything's real blurry back there. That's fine. Now, where I think, I'm going to move the taskbar over here. Where I think generative fill still doesn't work real well is when you actually want to generate something. Uh, so example, if I come in here and I just go in this area right here, and I want to uh, generate a dog, so I'm going to click generate, generative fill, and I'm going to type in dog and click generate. I don't think this always looks natural. So I think this part of generative fill uh, still needs some work, generally speaking. Um, sometimes it, it produces great results, but then um, more than half of the time, it does something like this, like we have a dog floating in air here. So that doesn't look right, that one doesn't look right, and that one doesn't look right. Probably most of that was because I didn't draw the lasso circle properly. Um, so, you know, it's my fault. But we could get rid of that whole layer and we could try to do it again. So maybe we'll get a bigger area like that. And then we'll, oops, click generative fill here. And then we'll type in dog there and click generate and see if this works. So it's kind of hit and miss uh, because it gives you three examples and maybe none of them look right. And you could click generate again and click get three more examples. Or in this case where I don't think maybe I drew my circle quite right, um, you could see that they're giant dogs. So it doesn't look right. So again, it's kind of hit and miss uh, with that. But I am um, more impressed with generative fill in general because it seems to, after um, listening to those people's suggestions, it seems to work much better. I want to get rid of the car. So again, I'm not going to do a tight selection around the car. I'm just going to do a selection like this. I want to get rid of this shadow on the right as well. So we'll come over like this and like that. And we'll click generative fill. And again, because I wanted to generate what's and kind of sample everything else in the image, we're not going to type anything in here. And we'll click generative or generate. And it um, hopefully we'll get rid of the car and hopefully will give us three examples without the red warning at the top telling us that we, you know, we're like inches away from being arrested because we generated something that was illegal. See, that did great. That looks great. So here's the other two examples. There's that one. And that one. I think all three are good. So it worked great on that case. Um, oh, you know what? As I look throughout the whole image, it didn't work that great. Uh, look over here on the left. It kind of, um, I don't know what's going on here. I mean, the original image was that. Oh, no, the original image was like that. Look at that. This is a stock photo, by the way, nothing I took. So, uh, yeah, so I thought it like just deformed the lamppost, but it must be a, a lamp that's on an angle to the actual post. So um, it's just blurred out and it's hard to see. So let's go to something else. Uh, this one, when I was messing around before I did the video, this was pretty impressive. I want to remove all the cars and I want to remove the person. And I'm going to do it in one false swoop. So what we're going to do is again use the lasso tool and we're going to come in here. We're going to go around here, here, down here, down here, down here. I probably should have grabbed their shadow, but I guess I could run Jenner to fill again uh, to get rid of the shadow. All right, so Jenner to fill. And we're going to again click Generate. So I want really just an empty, foggy, 
spooky looking parking lot. That's what my goal is here. Um, so we'll see how it does. Um, may have to, yeah, see it now outside of the shadow, it does actually look like oil drips though, doesn't it more so. But if you look over, I mean, it looks, <laughs> it looks great. It did a great job. We have three other example or two other examples. Looks like there's a, something here, some artifacts on this one. And there, it kind of put like a storefront almost over in here. But it's pretty impressive, I think. So if I want to get rid of this, I could just do it again around this shadow. And then click Generative Fill, and then click Generate. And see what that does. Hopefully it doesn't like repeat a line, like one of the uh, parking lines or anything like that, that it just puts, you know, asphalt down and make it look unlike a shadow would look. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Again, we have more examples. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's pretty impressive. And finally, I have this one. Uh, we want to get rid of uh, all the children. I just want an empty street. And this one, because I chose this in, uh, stock image because the children are taking up most of the image. Uh, whereas before, we took out, I mean, that one car was taking up a big part of the image, and then all the cars and that person in the foggy parking lot, that was taking up a big part of the image. But this is, I think, a little more challenging, where we have uh, the subject, which are the four children, taking up most of the image. All right, I'm running out of desk with my mouse. Come up in here. So I'm just trying to, I don't even know if I even have to like go in between the people like I'm doing here. If I could just do one like kind of big circle around everyone. I didn't try it that way. I just tried it like this. Like that. Okay. Generate fill and generate. And again, it's going to take a little while as it says up to Adobe server. So, of course, this depends on the speed of your internet connection. One thing I always thought was weird uh, when you get most cable, um, you know, services, when you have um, internet service through your cable company, the upload speeds are much slower than the download speeds. And I noticed like some other like Fios and stuff, the upload speeds are equal to the download speeds. I really don't understand what the issue is. But anyway, uh, that looks pretty good. Here's another example. You can see that it changed over here a little bit. It still looks pretty good. And a final example. And there's like something here, but I don't know. Let's just, that one doesn't look, but it looks like there's like a pole here that the trees are covering up. So that looks fine. Now, one last thing. I still don't think it, it generates objects that well. Um, so off here in the distance, I want to put a car. So I'm putting a car over here, right? So we're going to use generative fill, and we're going to type in car. You know what? I'm going to type in a red car, and we'll click generate. Now, it's obviously my circle probably looks horrible. It's probably going to be too small because my circle is too small that I drew, but we'll see what it does. Yeah, it's way too small. So we could go like that. Now you could say, well, can you use like free transform? Like if you hit, uh, you know, command or control k and then try to make it bigger but then it doesn't it doesn't blend uh right so you can't do that at least not yet hopefully that's something they could uh, fix but anyway so what we'll do is we'll take a bigger circle like this and then we'll do generative fill and we'll do red car so this uh probably a lot of trial and error as you're doing this because you, especially when you're trying to generate something uh you're area that you want it generated in you have to use your lasso tool or whatever tool you're using you have to use it really perfectly uh to get that object in there now this looks better there's another example that looks better and that looks better so the secret there was drawing the circle properly the first one was way too small but you can see how that that looks more natural so that looks pretty good so uh, my opinion has changed. I think Jenner Phil is, you know, probably something that um, is incredible, but still not something I'm going to use much. Um, since my photography lends itself more towards documentary, I don't think there's 
uh, something with generative fill where I'm going to actually alter pixels. I, I don't think that's something I would use, but I could see where an art photographer and advertising uh, photographers and things like that, I think that they would use generative fill a lot and it's going to probably um, be um, like, like life changing for them because it's going to offer them so many more opportunities. Um, but again, for like documentary photography, you obviously don't want to do anything uh, to alter the scene, um, stuff like that. But um, overall, pretty impressed now. So I've changed my opinion. I'm allowed to do that. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.